it's spring now and the pasture is just lovely at the moment. This one is being grazed down quite a bit by sheep. There's hundreds of sheep with their lambs out and clover, grass, plantain, chicory. This is what's building my soil beautifully. And these sheep sometimes though, they turtle themselves. They, they're so, get so fat, they're pregnant. They lie down to sleep and they can't get up. So I just gotta get her rolled over and up on her feet. That didn't take me long at all. She's a little imbalanced. She's kind of got a, a vertigo thing. So she'll be a little unsteady for a little bit, but she'll be okay now. She wasn't on her back for very long. <clears throat> but anyhow, the soil building of this is just incredible. Perennial plants here for years with their roots constantly in the soil, no tillage. This is what builds the organic matter fertility that I rely on when I do my my crops. I'm coming up with a little lamb here to sleep, making sure it's healthy. Looks all right. Just fell asleep. I'm not sure what to do. I was hoping it, I was worried it might have been sick or something. But these little lambs are friendly. They're not as nervous as the adults are. <laughs> hey there, sweetie. Each ewe has typically um, two on average. Sometimes they're triplets, sometimes they're singlets. And yeah, it's a good good day to be born. Nice, nice sunny weather. And we have a lot of bald eagles that come through here. Um, and they mostly are taking they mostly are eating the afterbirth, right? So after the lambs are born, the placentas come out. And that's what the eagles clean up. Fun time of year. There's a call and response going on right now. This little lamb is calling. And his mom is right there calling. And this is what's happened. They take naps. And then they, they spread out, grazing across the field. And then they have to find each other. So this lamb needs to hear its mama and run to it. And the mama needs to hear the lamb and run to the lamb. And it's like a Marco Polo game they play. An eagle flying up into the tree there. There's a lamb now running. Recognizes mama's call. Sometimes they show up to the wrong mother and they get kicked away. Oh, maybe. Maybe she is a triplet. So these are not my sheep. I, um, there's a sheep farmer who lives a little ways away and asked me to come out and just take a look at things. So I rescued that one ewe off her back and I'm just looking through the field to see if there's any more problems. Things look pretty good. No other issues. Yeah, that lamb found, uh, found its mama right there. So something to consider is that any time crops are harvested, and that crop can be a livestock or a plant, there are, and that harvest is then removed from the farm, that there's minerals from the soil that go with that crop. And one of the ways to replace those minerals is, is through fertilizer applications. Or this is an alternative that I find very fascinating. You give these mineral blocks to the livestock, and they, they lick them. They like the, the sort of a salty thing. And then they defecate and urinate over the field, spreading it out. So I, I think that that's an interesting way to think about kind of cheaply getting the, the remineralization of a field through a livestock rotation program. 
So in addition to sheep out here, there's some cattle as well. What's kind of neat about cattle is that you can just put one little string line up like this and, and charge it. Little electric pulse goes through this wire and they, they respect it. Um, and you can see the difference between the side where they haven't, haven't had opportunity to graze and the side that they have. So it's been clipped down. There's still lots here. And these cow pies are fantastic. There's an enormous colonization of the cow pies with uh, pill bugs and beetles and spiders and kinds of worms. So the, the richness biologically that's going on out here is very evident when you just look at the, what they're doing, the manure and, and bringing it back into the earth. And so it's kind of fun to tip the cow pies over and kind of explore what's underneath them. A bunch of stuff is running. <laughs> Cattle are a little more uh, gregarious or a little more friendly to humans, I guess, generally than, than sheep. At least these ones are a little more skittish. They're, they're beef cattle, um, not handled as much, but the adult sheep don't tend to come up to you. Like these animals will come up to you sometimes and let you scratch them. So they hang out in the shed for some reason, probably just uh, digesting. So these animals are um, ruminants, the sheep and the cattle. They have, a, they have these stomachs that can digest cellulose. So most of what's out here is, is fiber. We would call it fiber. So plant fibers or cellulose. And the human gut can't really digest these. But the ruminants can through bacterial associations. And so the vast majority of what's out there in the world that's green is not something we can eat. But ruminants, as well as, of course, fungi, bacteria, they all have the enzymes. And they cycle plant matter, both alive and dead, through their bodies, creating living biomass. Because most of the energy captured by the sun, the plants, photosynthesis, ends up getting stored as fiber, fibrous tissues that, that aren't sugars, they aren't fats. But these guys, these can handle it. What a sweetie.